Hey, yo, man, this situation in Western Africa, is just, I hope it doesn't get out of hand, man, because this is getting to a boiling point right now. France don't want to leave this country. Like, come on, man. Just imagine, for example, right? You invite someone into your house, or there's a guest in your house, but they've overstayed their welcome, and it's time for them to leave, but they refuse to go. Like, yo, it's my house, bro. Time to go. Like, hell no. no it's my house now. <laughs> like, what? What? These people are fed up. They're being taken for a ride. See what's going on in Niger right now. It's nothing new in that part of Western Africa. There's what you call the uh, France Afrique, as in French Africa. The, uh, Mode of modus operandi, the system of rule that was implemented in that region by Charles de Gaulle, the former prime minister of uh, of France, and that is still in effect till today. Those African countries, those Franco African countries, don't even have their own currency. Let me say that again. These countries don't have their own currency. They use the franc, the CFA franc. The old French currency, France don't even use that currency no more. They use the euros now. But they impose this currency on these countries. You have to use this currency or we're going to F up your country. So they've got the boots on the necks of these people for decades. They said in Niger, for example, that they got the independence in 1963. Mm. It's now, it's when they're getting their independence. Because they're kicking the French out. Because they're looting from the country so much. It's crazy. The French put leaders there that they own, that they control. They just put a black face there. Just put a black person there. But it's going to do their bidding. Why they give that person money. Don't care about the people. I'm surprised it's taking them this long now to wake up. And now they're like, no, we want the French out of this country. 80 to 85 percent of Niger don't have electricity, and pretty much the uranium that the French get from that country powers France's electric power plants, the nuclear power plant that powers the whole the country and gives them electricity. They get from Niger, but Niger don't even have electricity. What? Do, should I say that again? Because it doesn't it does it doesn't really sound. It sounds like like some. Like like a movie type type stuff. Like people are that stupid, but they're not stupid no more. They're waking up now and deciding to kick them out. But France has weighed the option now. Like, look, if these people kick us out, we don't get uranium from there anymore. We don't get oil from there anymore. All these precious metals, our country economically is going to be effed up. So France is saying no. Our basic survival relies on the subjugation of these people from that region. So we're not going anywhere. <laughs> They're like, no, we're not, what? We're not going nowhere. We're going to sit down here and nail our seats to the floor, drill our benches and our desks to the floor. We're not going nowhere. They're like, you got to go, man. It's, it's pretty much like a checkmate situation right now because France just can't stop mowing down people with machine guns because that's going to be a huge backlash. You're going to start killing a bunch of poverty-stricken black people in Africa. Hmm. The only recently started like quench down the protests that's been, that been going on in France for the last couple of months. They've only recently it's only recently starting to die down now. So if they start start mowing down people in Africa, mm -mm -mm, there's going to be an international backlash. This is going to be crazy. But they still don't want to go. Look look at this. It's not a coincidence that in the past couple of years there have been like eight coups, eight coup d'etats in that part of Western Africa, on French Africa, uh, Africa. In those former, well, not former French colonies, current French colonies. I'm just, this, this whole thing is mind-boggling to me. It's been like eight coups. And they're kicking out, dethroning, deposing the puppet government that have been put there by foreign powers. A.K.A. France. And the people are taking back the power. The military are coming in and be like, nope. I think Chad had one. I think Mali had one. Burkina Faso had one. And Niger, Gabon, and some other countries. They're like, no, you gotta go. 
they marching. Look, everyone is marching. The civilians are marching, and they, they, the military now, are uh, asking for volunteers to come and help them fight and protect the borders because the ECOWAS country, it's a group of countries that are owned or controlled by the Western government. They've stick them on, so it's like your little, your little attack dog. You stick on people, <laughs> so they stick the ECOWAS countries on Niger. Because they don't want to invade Niger directly. Because, like I said, it's going to result in a very bad, bad, bad publicity crisis. They're trying to get their stooge over there. The ECOWAS. E-C-O-W-A-S. They're trying to deal like the NATO of Africa. They're trying to get them to invade. And, but even those people, their citizens are saying, no, we don't want war. I think we can barely eat. People are starving over there. I think they want to fight wars? Come on, man. Military weapons are crap. What the Russia's over there in Niger. And in Burkina Faso as well, and they're giving aid to Niger, the people of Niger. They're helping them because they've sanctioned the life out of them. The West is sanctioning the poorest people in the world. What are you doing? They're sanctioning them. ECOWAS is sanctioning them too. They're not doing trade with them. They're pretty much wanting to starve them out. Imagine starving women and babies and kids just because you want uranium, you want resources, you want oil. Come on, man. You want manganese and all this stuff. Well, Burkina Faso and other countries are giving them aid, and they're warning ECOWAS and which, any other country that think they're going to invade Niger. Like, if you're going to invade Niger, you're pretty much picking a fight with us too. Algeria is back in Niger. Burkina Faso is back in Niger. Burkina Faso is back in Niger. You know, Russia is back in Niger. The Wagner troop is already there trying to train the military. You've got a bunch of civilians with weapons now, ready to... <laughs> this is a mess. They better find some soft solution because this, this is... This can escalate. Like, very, very fast. You can cut the tension with a knife. Look at that. They're marching to the army base. To the French army base. You gotta go. The people don't want you there. Just go home. Look at that. Just leave, please. <laughs> they're done begging now. Now they just want them to go. Look at that now, look at that. Burkina Faso sending aid over there. Hundreds of trucks carrying goods arrived in Teda. That's a border town close to Burkina Faso before proceeding to Niger's capital, Niamey. Burkina Faso is also ruled by a military regime and has warned that any armed intervention by the bloc in Niger will be considered a declaration of war on them as well. Meanwhile, thousands of people demonstrated in the capital, Niamey, in support of last month's military coup. The junta is saying that it will be restoring civilian rule within three years. Hundreds of trucks carrying goods arrived in Teda. France, take care of your own domestic issues. You've got immigrant crisis going on in your country. Focus on that. Leave these people alone. Let them be masters of their own destiny. Let them forge their own path. Go home, please.